Hey, what's up, Finland? This is Nergal, and I play in a band Behemoth. And we're here in Helsinki doing some promo for a Love Church of Darkest. Enjoy it. One of the busiest summers ever. Uh, a lot of work, a lot of just finishing up the record, the graphics, in between playing festivals and starting this promo trip now. But it's gonna, it's been amazing, okay? I'm tired, but I'm happy. But uh, this promo trip ends with uh, almost two weeks uh, holidays for me, vacations, like I'm um, gonna shut down my social media just to like, decompress fully, so. There's, there's a reward at the end of the tunnel. First of all, after such a strong and powerful title like the Satanist, I think that'd be a huge mistake for us to try to invent or like come up or top the magnificence of, of the word the Satanist. It's like an ultimate title, you know, like boom. That's it, there's, there's nothing beyond that. So what I needed to do, I needed to go back, like redefine myself and my thinking, and bring something that's gonna be groundbreaking within our own subgenre. And something that will make people confused. Confused, you know, that will make people think, that will make people ask and, yeah, and question. And, and that's what, this new title does and the fact you know where it comes from and the meaning behind it and the new meaning that we can give to it which I specifically mean because we are not a Christian band uh, we're quite an opposite so using the tool and just twisting it around and throwing it back at them I just couldn't come up with something more sacrilegious and blasphemous and just doing that and also I think that um, a lot of people from both camps can be very confused and very disturbed even metalheads or like kids that uh, you know they, they don't do the homework and they don't do the research and they be like what the fuck what this normal guy is thinking he's gonna Put Jesus, if I need to, if my vision demands that, I'll do whatever the fuck I need to to complete my vision. So yes, I think it's cool. I, I wasn't aware, I wasn't really like 100% con uh, convinced uh, from the first place. I, I came across that sentence and I was like, oh shit, that's amazing. That's, that's, it sounds fresh and it sounds new. And uh, what I did, I told it about this uh, to Ryan, a bassist. And he's all oh, cool, and then he immediately put it on the on the wallpaper on his uh, laptop, and he kept it for months. And every now and then, I just see his laptop, and I'm like, "What do you think?" I think it's an amazing title. And I wasn't for from for a long time. It still it been uh, my head. But I wouldn't be 100% sure if it's going to end up being a title. So there are some other options coming back and forth. But none of them were nearly as brilliant as this one. So I decided, okay, kind of risky, but it was not risking. It's not drinking champagne, right? Bring on some champagne! <laughs> Out of 10 or 20, I could just, you know, throw it to you right now. Like the first one uh, that I think of, and I've never said it before, is like, Hey, Christians, how about that? I am way closer to what you preach than you think. And I'm way closer to actually putting it in action than you do 
you know, the true meaning behind it. And uh, and that should this should confuse again both camps, because uh, to me this sounds very humane, you know, it sounds very sincere and. Uh, but then again, you know, when I was thinking of this title, you know, I, was, I just I recently uh, I went to a Rolling Stones show, and when I was thinking about this title, I had this sympathy of the devil, uh, so sympathy to the devil uh, in the back of my head. And I'm like, to me, that there is an obvious, you know, parallel between both titles, you know, uh, because. Who's falling? Who's at his darkest? Who's down there, you know, in the kingdom below? And who we should embrace? Well, I'm not gonna answer this question. It's hard for me to, to compare uh, my own uh, like music, you know, uh, it's just because I embrace all of it, you know, it's it's me, it's it's my kids, you know, so I don't really like I don't really like to put one over the another. It's hard to compare, but um, I guess that well I personally think that the sound on the new one is, is, is awesome. It's the best so far. And uh, it's pretty diverse, it's actually a very diverse record, it's very multi-layered, it's more demand it's definitely has more dimensions than any other behemoth. Um, yeah, 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 it's more diverse, yeah. And uh, still is very coherent, still is very compact, you know, like, like monolithic, with the intro, outro, and the way it's like structures and stuff. And uh, even though it's very rock based, it's also extremely radical and, and just all over the place, overwhelming. It's, I really like to confront, uh, like, especially the first confrontations, you know, with people, with journalists, because they're the first ones to listen to every new album. It's cool to, to hear their feedback because, because it's the first time I hear people, people's uh, reaction to the record, and I'm like, oh, cool. So when they tell me something, I kind of I learn about the record more, because I got my own idea, but it's just my own idea and I might be wrong, you know what I mean? I may be thinking, oh this is a really fast record, and maybe it's not. Oh this is a very heavy record, maybe it's not heavy. Maybe it's more, I don't know, straight up or... You know what, it's like, it's, it's cool to, to get these uh, different uh, angles. It was pretty regular. Like usually starts with me just jamming on the guitar and uh, and bringing the ideas you know to, to the rehearsal room. So there was nothing extraordinary about songwriting process. I think it took me a couple of months to collect all the ideas. It took us a couple of months to work on arrangements. It took us six months to track everything down, which is probably the longest we've taken ever but then the whole recording process was so spread out uh, in time and also in places because we would just record like every, pretty much every instrument we would just record in different location different city album was like sub mixes on drums were done in Sweden then mixed in US must have been US so it was and it took us like six months to complete all of this or longer so uh, so it feels like a, an, an eternity, but, uh, but it was pretty smooth, I must say. I mean, with the Satanists, we faced some serious problems. We had to like, postpone the release day, and there was a lot of mess. Here, no. It was relatively smooth. Um, we clashed sometimes, you know, like within the band, three of us, when we discuss, we clash, we, we collide, you know, because we have different visions and, and stuff. But uh, we are pretty much on the same page most of the time, or like obviously 
some tensions here and there. They are, they, it's good they are they are there, but uh, like the result, it's like oh wow, yeah, we must be doing something right. And I'm, I'm, I'm super proud of it. Really proud of the record. Have no, I mean, of course it's too early to you know to you know to for me to judge that, but. Uh, it's like one of these records that when it's done, it's done, and I don't really want to go back and like do any extra tweaks. When I think of it, like, would you like, would I like to do something better? I don't think I could do anything better. No fucking way. Well, I wrote the song first. Funny, it was actually, it was actually the first riff I think I, I made for the record. Very, it, like the the. This is my favorite part, you know, on the on the on the on the fretboard that I explore. So when I brought that and we made this first part with it with a with a blast beat and stuff, that was like that felt like okay, this is very traditional behemoth. And uh, and we left it there. And then I proceeded with all the uh, other songs. And then I didn't think like maybe six years, six months later, I would just go back to this initial idea. And I put this like uh, coda, the like, ending part. And that's how I felt that okay, this is it. The song is finished. It's pretty fucking awesome. But before that, it didn't feel like it was completed. It was like, ah, if we don't finish, if we don't wrap it up nicely, I don't think I'm gonna. It's gonna end up on the record. So funny how from the idea that I thought was pretty generic for us, uh, how this idea um, grew up into like the song, and in the end of the day, the song that all of us uh, like uh, agreed that okay, this should be the first single. It's weird, you know, like sometimes you, know, you write something and you're not aware how, it, you know, of, of uh, the journey it's gonna take, you know, from, from this moment, so... It's like I... I uh, sometimes I just bring up, like, the Echen for Eskaton, um, which is our evergreen, we always, like, play that song live, you know, but um, I don't know if like, many people know that this was an experiment that I did, and both Les and Inferno, who were in the band back then, Inferno still is, but Les, is no more. They they were like, what? They didn't want to play it. They were like, so I I asked them back then, let's play it once, so I know that it's that it's there. I'm gonna tape it, and the next time you're gonna record it in a studio. If it doesn't work, it's, we're gonna put it on the record. They're like, okay, okay. And it happened to be one of our biggest songs. Or Apronobis, this song we put together in 45 minutes. And just because we put it in 45 minutes, I would question its quality and honesty. Mm -hmm. I was like, no good song in history could have been could could be done in 45 minutes. You really need to, you know, it's like giving birth. You know, it needs to be the process must be painful. Wrong. There is no formula. You never know what happens. This is art. It just, you know, you can spark, spark, spark it. You can trigger it somehow, but then it just evolves. You know, it just goes, may go like drift away and go back and forth. And you can try to navigate it. You can try to control it, but you never know what the effect is gonna be in the end of the day. At least in my case. So it's very exciting to see that trip that sometimes song takes. To what it is, you know, from this, from this first scratch till like the last, to the fact that it's uh, the first single. It's like wow. So it's cool. Yeah, I I wrote the music first, and I didn't have the title. I was uh, with my car, with my uh, only car in LA, driving down downtown, and I saw this poster of this band Prayers, and I wasn't aware of what Prayers is. And a friend of mine who was with me in the car. I'm gonna play you this, and he played me the song called. I need to check it. Sorry. No problem. <laughs> because I already brought it up a couple of times, and I'm so bad with names that. Uh... From dog to god. 
and I love the song. It's a it's an electronic music, but it's awesome, and I really dig it. Yeah. It's a really cool band it's called Prayers, and I check the. And I saw the title and I was like, that's a cool title. And then, you know, somehow, you know, I reminded myself about sleep no go uh, people equal shit. And I'm like, maybe that's something good for, for that song that I'm still like, uh, 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 you know, avoiding the, the, the title. And then uh, when I came up with the title, the, the quote from Alice the Crowley came that yeah. we use for the, within the song as well. And that's how it all came together. Really weird, you know, like, <laughs> when I think of how, how songs come together, like, the, side, the title comes last, and then the title, like, this is the uh, music, then the lyrics, then the title, and then some extra lyrics because of the title. So when you look at, uh, on this process, it's like, that's why it's like, like very random yeah, somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's weird, uh, but I like to observe, you know, how, how it goes. But that's a creative process and yeah, 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 yeah. Anything, right? yeah, it's like I call it puzzle, you know, it's like a puzzle. You just put things together and if you're lucky you're you you make it. It's always it's always starts with a creative dialogue between me and Darek from Grupa thirteen. Who's like the main producer of our videos and we just I send him song, we talk. Or sometimes I come up with something, sometimes I come up with a complete picture, and sometimes I come up with nothing. I'm like, hey, this is pieces. Help me out to put it all together. So, um, and this particular video, uh, it basically consists on this moving, I call it moving pictures, the crucifixion and stuff, and uh, it's actually called Altar from, uh, I don't remember from uh, uh, from Grunwald, uh, the painter. Anyways, when you see the booklet, you'll see how it's connected with the video, because the main concept for the booklet was to that we were strongly, actually, literally inspired by some of the biggest classical painters, and we are casting there as uh, characters, us, them. And Jesus and sometimes in front of Jesus and like we got like Memling, we got the Green Greenwald, and we got uh, Caravaggio, we got Polish uh, Malczewski, a few other guys that names I don't remember now. And we took their paintings and we just we just build the whole story behind it, you know. But we also filmed it all. We filmed it all, so you have this, you know, I call it like moving paintings. That you, it feels it feels very static, but then like things like slowly move. Yeah. And I think that's awesome. I love it. I when I, uh, I there's this uh, theater called Punch and Drunk, and it's based in London and New York. And I saw two spectacles, two two plays in uh, in New York, and there's the scene I call it the scene of the Final Supper scene that they have, which is a reference to the Final Supper. Anyways, it, that's the way how, how they play, you know, with a certain lightning and how they, how they play there. You, know, you, should, you really need to see that and you can't see it because it's not even on YouTube. Because it's, uh, it's very uh, uh, like hidden. It's, you know, you, you, all the spectators wear masks like in a movie and it's, it's really cool. And when I saw it, I was like, oh shit, that would be amazing to do. To, 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 to shoot a video like that, and uh, and we did. I mean, I, following that that idea, how I wanted this to move, and it did really work. Great. Yeah, it looks really like well, like you said, kind of like a painting. Yeah, it looks very. Uh, I mean, it looks very tasteful and very. Yeah, tasteful is the right word. You know, I like to do things. You know, that look very distinct and. And uh, the quality is there, and it's. I really hope that like 
you must be stupid to say that it's shit, you know what I mean? You don't necessarily need to like the music, but it's like you'll see that uh, if, uh, there's some, there's a lot of effort that someone put on it. And yes, we did. bought those kids from gypsies. So they had to do what they asked them to do. <laughs> now I got friends uh, with um, I got friends with you know, good friends with, with kids. And uh, like most of these kids actually happen to be uh, to be uh, fans of like you know little I'm, black metal fans? Yeah I mean well, I'm, <laughs> What I'm saying is that I'm like a rock and roll yeah. uncle, you know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. I'm, uh, uh, I'm likable person to them, and uh, they, they enjoy like my company. So they knew that they had known me before most of them. So it was like easy, you know. And uh, you know, no English, you know how to pronounce it, even though you can hear the accent, but it's actually very cool. And um, there was only one kid that I met for the first time, two kids that I met for the first time. But they were all cool, very excited. Did they realize what they are like mm. chanting, actually? No, like if you're like six or eight, do you really question that kind of stuff? No. no. <laughs> They're probably gonna realize, you know, that a few years, like, a few years down the road, when they go, eventually go back to that, they are like, oh, really? I did that. <laughs> And, and they either be <laughs> proud or ashamed of that. <laughs> I guess so. I really, I really, I'd like to think of Behemoth as something more than just rock and roll band. You know, I, we're not like your typical, you know, heavy metal band. You're, we use heavy metal, but it's just one platform, and there's more dimensions there, and we have so many interests, and we're so. Um, distracted, you know, we have distracted energies to just float everywhere and explore different channels of of universe. And uh, we try to, you know, bring what's interesting and inspiring in one place and make an art of it. You know what I mean? So to me, it's like, yeah, I really see it as 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 you know, quoting one of our own album titles here and beyond I like to think of Behemoth as, 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 as musical band musical band music band and beyond so I'm really interested in just exploring different dimensions with, 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 with this band yeah I remember um, our trip to play at Tuska for the first time ever and it was like the longest trip ever because we took two ferries we ferry from Gdańsk to Sweden then travel on a train and from and uh, I'm like shit I'm mean, like to, today it sounds surreal you know like who would have fucking take that much effort to come to Finland to play but uh, obviously you know with all the planes and like flights being cheap it wasn't that cheap back then and then we couldn't really afford it so it was cheaper still like to travel like gypsies uh, it is worth and it was worth doing that because it kind of started our effort and ever since we come back to Finland we should come back often but I'm really excited about two shows that are happening and Finland very soon so just stay tuned and, and it's only a few months and I really hope to meet you out there. We're bringing the biggest production, we're bringing great company. What's in the throne room and at the gates? Couldn't be more excited about this. So, yeah, see you soon. <laughs>